Welcome to the Rusted Guarded Homestead. In today's episode on growing in a greenhouse, we're going to talk about really the supplies you need to get started. Still haven't gotten a second coat of paint on a greenhouse yet, that will come. So outside the greenhouse, I have a couple things going on. You can see containers under there. This is for potting up into gallon containers, bigger containers. Not the best quality, not the worst quality, but a basic uh, potting up mix for bringing in like bare root plants or anything that I'm buying in the big box stores that may be in the small boxes, plastic bags. And then over here in the trash can, lidded of course, you don't want water getting in here. This is all my seed starting mix. Nice quality, ready to um, set up my seed starts, do whatever I need to do in the greenhouse. I have it outside because I use a lot of it. It takes up space. Let's go inside, I'll show you some more of the materials. Right now I have mostly my cool weather crops in here. So the things that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a watering can. So I have one right there and actually the shower of water that comes out of there is nice and fine and soft and you sort of want that. The one that I've been using, one of my standard cans I use out of my garden, the water just comes out too quickly and it was knocking the soil out of the tray. Out here I'm not going to really necessarily always be bottom watering. Depending on what's going on I'm going to be watering from the top. Your seed cells are going to dry out at different times because of the heat and the days and all that kind of stuff. So watering on top is also okay because they do get a drying cycle pretty fast in a greenhouse. Anyway, you want a watering can with a very fine shower that's not going to disturb the soil coming out. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is how much do you want to grow in here? You don't need to overgrow. So. I sell all of the stuff at my seed shop. There's a link in the video description if you want starting supplies. When you're starting in the standard sixes, that's perfect. Like I have a lot right over here. Um, I've got lettuces and spinach in the smaller cells and these are about ready to go into the garden. I'm also growing in the larger cells. You can see those are the bigger fours and this is uh, collards right in there. If you grow in a bigger cell, and it all really depends on the crop that you're growing, they can stay in there much longer. So like when I'm getting to tomatoes and peppers, they're going to be in these larger four packs. You don't have to pot up as much. So there's a little bit of strategy behind what size cell you're going to put them in. A lot of the stuff that's coming up here is like basil, leafy greens, stuff that will get popped out of these cells, go right into the garden. If you want to subscribe and follow me, um, I'll show you what I'm planting in the garden. And you're also going to need two and a half inch pots, perfect for herbs, tomatoes, peppers, all kinds of different things. This video is also sponsored by The Rusted Garden. I have a new seed collection called the Scan and Grow Collection. I have the warm weather crops up top. I have a five pack herb collection. And if you scan the back, there's a video of me that will come up in the first five minutes. I will explain to you how to plant these seeds directly in the garden. And then the rest of the video, the next 10 minutes, really gives you a lot of tips on just how to have a successful garden. So definitely you want to buy seeds. Certainly please, if you'd like, please buy them for me. Now, stations right down there, that's my potting up mix. You know, it's good stuff. There's a lot more wood in there, a lot more chunky things in there that are perfect for the containers that are right back there. Seed starting mix I have here for filling up um, some of the trays that don't get filled, but I fill them all outside right there in the, in the trash can. Because my greenhouse is smaller, I'm not keeping that trash can in here because I want to be able to move around. That potting up mix that's a little bit chunkier is being used for boxed plants. I have rhubarb in there. Like for instance, I just bought some blueberry plants. They're going to go into these gallon containers. So you want a little bit of a strategy on the different kind of cells you're going to be using, what you're going to be growing. You don't want to overplant. So let me just talk about basic labeling. For basic labeling, I recommend duct tape, um, any color that you're going to be able to see the magic marker on there. And you're going to label the containers that way. You can put in markers and stuff like that, but that ends up using more plastic. You don't really need to do that. And I like doing it this way because the markers aren't going to get knocked out. So let me explain that. Here are the cool weather crops for my collection. So it's 15 different seed packets, all really focused for the new gardener. The basic vegetables that do really well. You may want to plant into these plastic shoe boxes. This one is, let me just look. These are the onion seeds over planted and these are leek seed seeds over planted. There's no hole in here. You just kind of eyeball the moisture. These are going to grow all my transplants that will go out into the garden. So you can grow in different containers. It doesn't just have to be these seed starting cells. So in here I have peas. 
I know what they are, the green arrow. They're all peas. I like peas. I'm going to grow a lot of peas. I've planted peas out in a garden already, probably 200. So if you want to grow a whole flat of peas, that's wonderful. But you don't have to, you know, grow a whole flat of cabbage or a whole flat of broccoli. I really recommend just breaking it up with the tape. So here are six red romaine plants. These are little marvel. This is also a red loose leaf lettuce. This is little gem um, romaine. Then I have some Tulsi, Thai basil, different things. And I'm just labeling right along here, telling me what each six pack is. And in this flat of 72 plugs, that's a lot of plants. If you're going to go and buy an individual plant, and right now I'm kind of annoyed with companies selling plants in a cup for five or six dollars. So imagine 72 plants here. You can buy the stuff from me, get it online wherever, maybe cost, including the soil, let's just say five bucks for everything. You can reuse this year after year. Each plant's only going to cost you like three or four cents. You know, if you're paying top dollar for transplants, let's just say four bucks a plant times 72, that's like almost $300 that you can grow right here yourself. Now, depending on what you decide to grow, you may want to start these flats inside. You don't need a grow light. For instance, I know that I have cool weather crops in here. They can take a frost. Here's just an example. This is my tomato plant that I brought out early. Temperatures are getting into the mid 20s at times freezing that plant didn't survive everything else is fine because they're cool weather crops so again if you want to subscribe and follow me we'll be talking about cool weather crops right now we'll move into the warm weather crops but because the night temperatures can still get down into the 30s not quite frost not quite quite freezing the soil temperature cools off and that can slow germination so if you want to start like a flat of i think this might be kohlrabi yep yeah, it's kohlrabi if you want to start this in the house, leave it in the house. It doesn't need grow lights. The warmth of the house will help this germinate quicker. And as soon as you see them pop, you just take them outside to your greenhouse. This way you've sped up germination by using the warmth of the house. And now these plants can stay out here, thrive during the day when it gets up to 60, 70 degrees. They're already germinated. They don't really care about the cool weather at night. And in fact, most of your cool weather crops do better when the night temperatures drop. This way they kind of stay stocky and stronger and they just like those temperatures. I needed to cut in because I forgot one thing. What are we going to use to fertilize these plants? So I recommend, I like using worm castings. Outside, you've seen me sterilize my seed starting mix and my mixes that I'm using indoors. Outdoors, I don't worry about it. I'm going to get fungus gnats. There are going to be problems. But I am mixing in worm castings to really take care of the initial nutrients for my plants and I have a water soluble fertilizer that's fish emulsion and I recommend any water soluble fertilizer um, I'm using agro thrive that I happen to get on sale for a dollar a container how could I pass that up agro thrive works really well nice balanced N P and K you want to use your water soluble fertilizers at a reduced mix so if it says like one teaspoon or one tablespoon per gallon maybe use a quarter teaspoon you don't need a lot of fertilizers in these cells but you want to use the water soluble type if you have to pick one just pick the water soluble type um, agro thrive is in the video description if you want to check them out water soluble means the nutrients are going to be ready for your plants immediately so they're going to take in the nitrogen phosphorus potassium and they're going to grow well Worm castings are good um, to kind of bring in other elements, growth hormones, all the good stuff earthworms leave behind. If you were going to use organic granular fertilizers, the slow release dry organic fertilizers, they're not going to really work in here. In fact, they're going to kind of grow mold and fungus because they have to be broken down. They have to decay with microbiology and they're slow release because they break down slowly when they're out in your main garden and they give back to the soil. But inside worm castings, if you want, and then definitely a water soluble fertilizer for feeding your plants. I will go over in other videos how often to feed them, when to feed them, etc. All right, so one more thing that's really important. If you're in growing in a greenhouse, and obviously you're watching this video because it's called growing in a greenhouse, you wanna make sure you're able to vent your greenhouse. This is a window that opens if, you, if I push it up. I can't right now because it's closed by this lever. 
This is mechanical. There's no electricity. There's wax in there. When it heats up, the wax expands, pushes the lever, opens up the window, window vents the greenhouse. It's really important that you have some sort of venting in your greenhouse so that your plants don't cook and it's very easy for your plants to overheat but more importantly a day of sunshine in the 70s no clouds no vent it can get up to well over 100 degrees dry everything out you're going to be very disappointed those are some of the basic supplies that you need to get started and for instance i just want to go over we have the basic seed starting mix and then I have the potting up mix that I'm using. Those are grape vines, um, and one of them is a raspberry. So potting up mix, stuff goes into there, label it, you know what it is. And then the seed starting mix goes into the trays. This is not a big space, maybe, I don't know, maybe 8 by 10 or something like that. I don't even know what it is. But it works. There's so many plants growing in here. I enjoy it have onions over here. I'll be showing you how to plant those. Those are artichokes and stuff like that. So you want your, your place set up in a way that you can move around. I brought in some benches so I can sit and do some potting up. I have the different stations here, different materials. I'm ready to go. You just want to have a plan. Don't come out here and do like, you know, right here, for instance, I love beets. So the right side is all Ruby Queen. These are all, I think, what are they? Um, Detroit dark beets all in there. Some people say you can't transplant beets from cells. That's a myth. I've been doing it for years, but I know exactly what I want. You know, more Ruby Queens, more Detroits, um, mixed kohlrabi in here, a whole flat of red romaine. That is Windsor early. <laughs> I forget what that is. It's probably cabbage. Yeah. And then that's a red acre cabbage. So I have everything growing. That's going to go into my garden but just kind of grow it with the strategy so you're not having you know your whole space filled up with plants that you're never going to use it's great if you get even away to friends and such but something like this really makes a difference so plan out your garden think about what you want to grow it's fine to label them just buy the six packs in there or however you're growing them and you should have a really good experience finally the watering you're, that's just going to vary based on whether or not you have venting in here, um, how hot it gets, all that kind of stuff. The best way to tell, let me find one. It's, these are still connected. So, hold on a second. When I pick this up, it's still heavy. You always want the top to dry. That's just good hygiene for your plants. It always dries from the top down. And then when this lightens up, you know that you've missed watering. So it's still a little bit heavy. So when it lightens, I wait a day or two, and then I come and I water, it, water them in. You don't want any of your plants staying waterlogged 24 seven. You want them to go through a drying process. It makes a big difference with molds and fungus and with root rot and really growing healthy roots. Roots need oxygen. So keeping them kind of wet can be an issue, especially your cool weather crops when it may get really cold in here. So you have damp roots. Um, soil that stays overly saturated, it can impact your plants. So I hope this gives you an idea of some of the supplies you will need to get started. Again, please subscribe. I will be showing you how to grow different plants in here. They just got started, so the video will be really boring showing you how I do Ruby Queen kohlrabi and lettuce. When they're up and sprouted, we'll do a video. I'll also show you how I get them into the garden. And if you're interested in my Scan and Grow collection, please check out the video description. And remember, you can just scan the QR code, a video will pop up, and I'll explain to you how to direct sow the seeds. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And thanks for watching.